Hello, my name is Chad Sloan. Uh, I'm honored to be here with you. I want to thank you for joining us at Pinnacle Online today. Uh, I'm from Canton originally, uh, but I've been gone longer than I'm willing to admit. Uh, my family and I, I've got four kids and a beautiful wife, and we returned to Canton, or I moved back to Canton in February of this year and found Pinnacle as our church home. Um, I was a pastor for 12 and a half years in Mooresville, North Carolina, uh, previously, uh, years ago, and, uh, and Pastor Heath uh, daringly invited me uh, to share a message this weekend. And so, man, I am so honored to be here with you. And, you know, speaking of Pastor Heath and leadership here at Pinnacle, uh, I, I just want to let you know, um, and, and, and you probably know this, they are the real deal. They're the real deal. Uh, I mean, these guys, I, I got the opportunity after the floods and during the, the, um, all the work being done uh, to work side by side with them for two weeks um, and in, in the aftermath of Helene. And man, it's, it's under pressure where you see the true colors of people and their true colors are amazing. Uh, Pastor he, our Pastor Caleb, I got to crawl under a, a mobile home and just see him wall around in mud, cleaning out wet insulation and hauling it out with a smile on his face and, and not a harsh word. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing to see. Pastor Heath, my wife got to see him show up one morning at the building and a guy came up and said, hey, did you get my note? I left a note that I, I needed a pair of shoes and some other supplies. And Pastor Heath looked down at his feet and said, hey, uh, it looks like you wear about the same shoes as me, same size. And so he took, he literally took the shoes off his feet and gave them the guy and invited him in uh, to come and help himself to the supplies. It's, it's just amazing to see the humility and love that this leadership team here has for their church in this community. Uh, Walker and Erica are the hardest, some of the hardest workers I've ever met. Um, and they do so much to move this thing forward and, uh, and grow God's kingdom. And Tommy and Ashley, they're saints. Um, I know this because uh, one day during the relief work, um, my wife was in one vehicle, went one way serving in an area and I was another vehicle going the other way. And we just got cross communication and I went home with my brother-in-law to, to cut down a tree that had fallen over the driveway. All right. And so it's late in the afternoon. I get a call from Pastor Caleb. He's like, hey bro, how's it going? I was like, good man, how are you? He's like, hey, um, you know your children are still here at the church? <laughs> it was like, 30 minutes or so after they had closed the building and he's calling me to see if I even know where my kids are. I felt like a deadbeat dad. I drove up, but Tommy and Ashley were there with their kids. My kids didn't even notice. They're having a good time. And Tommy and Ashley had smiles on their faces. They were so kind and so loving and so forgiving. <laughs> uh, I uh, told them I felt like a deadbeat dad and they said, no way, your kids are amazing. And they were so complimentary. And so, man, this is the kind of people that lead Pinnacle uh, from a staff perspective, but the leadership is all throughout. It's an amazing place to be, and we're proud to call this our church home. Uh, in fact, you know, I was talking about the storm. One of the things in the storm that I think was probably peaceful at first was the fact that for four or five days, we didn't have any uh, communication with the outside world, no internet, uh, no phone calls, no emails. It's kind of amazing. But then it started getting frustrating. You know, I mean, there's times when my wife and I, you know, we sit around, we maybe say something to the kids. In fact, my wife will tell the kids something. I'm like, no, that's not true. And so I kind of like to just instantly, you know, go to Google and fact check her, right? To just prove her wrong. Uh, and she's done that to me a time or two. We're, we're both guilty, uh, but we couldn't do that. No internet, you know, it gets frustrating. And, and that's one of the things I think about our culture. We're an instant gratification culture. We like instant information at our fingertips. And uh, our, our technology aims that way. Uh, entertainment on demand, the marketing and ads that we watch and see uh, are that way. Our shopping experiences are, are that way. It's, it's all to fulfill this inner desire for instant gratification. Uh, in fact, the other day I ran out of coffee pods for my coffee machine. I, I put the last one in for my last coffee that morning. I was like, man, I need to get some coffee pods. And then I looked up on Amazon and ordered some and 
before I woke up the next morning, my coffee was sitting outside my door. I just had to go get it, plug it in my machine, and I had coffee the next day, the next morning. It, I didn't even skip a beat. Amazon is killing it on the instant gratification shopping. Uh, they just are. And there's everything. There's instant meals. There's companies that pay instant paycheck the day you work, your first day you work, you get paid. I mean, it's, it's crazy what um, our, our culture is like. And, you know, some of that's kind of nice, actually. But the problem is, is when we apply this desire for instant gratification, when we apply that to our faith and to our relationship with God. See, uh, our, our faith journey is just that. It's not a sprint, it's a journey. It's done and built and grown over time. And now we're all on uh, uh, this journey and we're all in different areas, different parts of this journey. Um, but see, God is not an instant gratification God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Uh, the word says, and he knows our desires. He knows our need. He is Jehovah Jireh, God, the provider. He wants to provide for us, but it's not always instant. And it's not always just the way we want it. It's not Burger King, right? Just the way you want it. Uh, so if you've ever prayed for something really, really hard and it, your prayer was not answered the way that you thought it should be, then this message is for you, okay? Uh, if you are not sure where you are on your faith journey or whether even or not you have one, then we are glad you are joining us this weekend. I am so glad you're here uh, because this message is for you as well. And maybe you're a person and maybe you're struggling with your faith or you're struggling in life right now or you're struggling with some fears and, it, and it's, it's, it's got you doubting everything you know about God and the church and faith and the Bible. I am so glad you picked the perfect weekend to join us here at Pinnacle Online. Now, we're in a series called Resilient Faith and we've been, where we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11 over a few weeks. And, uh, and so today, uh, what Hebrews chapter 11, what it is, is a chapter, it's referred to as the Faith Hall of Fame. Uh, it describes what faith is in the first line of the chapter and then goes on to tell different stories of people from the Old Testament who faced great trials with great faith. And so that's why we call it the Faith Hall of Fame. And today we're looking at verse eight of chapter 11, where it says this, it was by faith that Abraham, we're talking about Abraham and Sarah from the Old Testament. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Now, I think that's amazing because he, God told Abraham to just pack up, leave your hometown, leave everybody you know, grab your essential belongings and your, you know, your immediate family and head out. And I'm not gonna tell you where to go. I, I'm just gonna lead you along the way. You're not, you don't know the end result. There is a promised land, but technically he goes on to say that you're gonna live there in a tent and like you're a stranger, like you're an alien in your own land. Um, and, and so I, I love this. And what this teaches us is this point. And if you like to write notes, I encourage you to write this down, that the opposite of faith is not doubt. We all have doubts. Um, we think that doubts, you know, the more doubt we have, the less faith we have. That's not necessarily true. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is disobedience disobedience. Now, if you went to Sunday school and, you know, grew up that way, Abraham and Sarah, you know, they doubted God. Um, they, the, Abraham once tried to pass his wife off because wife off is his sister, uh, did that twice because she was so beautiful and he was afraid for his life. And so he, he doubted God's protection, he doubted God's provision, right? Uh, they doubted that God would give them a son as, as they got so old. And so they doubted God, but doubt is a natural part of walking with Jesus. It's a natural part of our faith journey. Um, to come to faith in Christ doesn't mean you've worked out all there, all there is to know about God or the Bible or even the church. That's not what it's saying. Faith is just a step of obedience, one step after the other, because it's just that you're obeying what God's putting on your heart and you're taking that next step. Maybe you're doubting right now if God is real. 
uh, maybe you're doubting, you know, maybe you felt like God gave you a calling and you're doubting if it's, if it's real or if that is really your calling or that you really heard him right. Or maybe you're doubting his plan for your life or maybe you're in the circumstance right now that has you doubting everything. Uh, I wanna encourage you that one thing I've discovered through faith journey, you've heard the saying, hindsight is twenty twenty. Well, so many times I'll go through a season of challenge and, 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 and craziness. And it's once I get past that season that I can look back and see where God used each one of those circumstances to do something powerful in my life and something powerful in the life of the people around me. So I wanna encourage you to do this. Simply obey. What is God calling you to do right now? Maybe, maybe you're a parent that has a kid that's far from God. I wanna encourage you, keep praying in faith and be prepared to open your arms wide open, Jesus, just as Jesus is prepared to do as they return, all right? Maybe you lost a lot in this flood and maybe it wasn't a house or a car, but maybe it's like some friends of mine, they lost a third of their income this year because of cancellations through the fall season. I wanna encourage you, keep moving forward. Keep your faith in action. Keep praying, keep being generous, keep serving. Maybe take some of the extra time you have and serve, serve others, serve the church. Small steps of faith, God can empower to do amazing things, which is what he did with Sarah, Abraham's wife. Look at verse 11 in chapter 11. It was by faith, that even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed that God would keep his promise. Uh, other translations said her, her womb was dried up or she was barren uh, you know, all her life, never ha- able to have a child uh, until her very, very old age. And, uh, or, and one of the uh, versions says that Abraham's loins were dead. In other words, hey, listen, they didn't have the little blue pill back then, okay? I mean, you get where I'm saying? I know it's TMI, TMI, but Abraham, uh, it was his faith, despite his doubt, uh, that led to him having a kid at 100. See, and it wasn't, he didn't go from no faith at all to having a son at 100 years old, which is what God did in their life. It, it, it was steps of obedience. He had a history of putting his faith in God, of following God, of leaving all he knew to follow God and go to this promised land that he didn't even know where he's going, right? He had this history and this relationship with God. See, faith is a muscle and you have to work it out. You work, if you, you don't work it out, it doesn't grow. See, uh, Jesus said that if you had the faith of a teeny mustard seed, is it's, you wouldn't even be able to see it on this camera. Then you could move mountains. And see, that's faith in action. See, a mustard seed grows up to be a plant that produces about 10,000 mustard seeds. And so those 10,000 produce 10,000 more. And don't fact check me, but I think that's like 100 million uh, mustard seeds. See, that's the kind of faith that can move mountains. It can move mountains in my life and it can move mountains in your life. Um, it can help you, get through that dead end job and give you purpose uh, and give you something more uh, rewarding. It can help that prodigal child end up in the arms of Jesus, that kind of faith. That kind of faith can repair relationships, heal hurts and break addictions in your life. And it can help others. In the aftermath of, of Helene, um, just having a warm home, warm home is a mountain for many and your faith can move that mountain for families. Uh, Just having a ride to work because their car was swept away is a mountain for somebody, but you can move, your faith can move that mountain for that person. That's the power. See, small actions done in faith over time lead to big results. They lead to big results. Small actions done in faith over time lead to big results results. So I want to encourage you to practice an active faith. Uh, Flex, use that. Big or small, you've got to use that muscle to grow it. Maybe you have little faith, 
just a little. And you're not yet maybe a, even a, a Jesus follower. You don't consider yourself a, a Christian yet, but you're here. You're here and we're so glad you're here. I have the faith to believe that you're here for a reason, that you clicked the link, that you accepted the invite or whatever it is, you did that. And I believe it is for a reason and God will use that. I have that kind of faith. Uh, the, the grain of sand of faith that maybe you have that got you here, I want to encourage you to keep it active, keep it moving forward. Take the next step. Try praying. Try tr just praying on your own. Uh, try reading the Bible. If you don't have one, contact us. We'll get you one. All right. Uh, check out a growth group. You can find those online. A growth group is just a, it's just a normal group it just of people trying to figure out how to apply God's word to their life. Very simple. And uh, it's just real life, real people. See, there's no better place to grow your faith than with church family, than plugged in, rooted in the church. Because that, that kind of faith can take your grain of sand of worth of faith and turn it into a beautiful, valuable pearl, right? Over time. Now, maybe you have big faith, but it's atrophied or it's, you, you know, you need to dust it off and put it into action. It's kind of like I was telling my wife the other day, I was like, honey, we've got this gym membership over here at like Haywood Regional, whatever that gym is over there. We've got a whole family membership. I was like, but we're paying the money, but if we don't show up, we're not gonna see any changes, okay? Uh, we're not gonna see changes in our kids. We're not gonna see changes in us. We need to show up. We need to, like, we need to get there more often. And our faith is the same way. We need to put it into action. We need to, uh, and if maybe you've had faith, you've grown up in the church, maybe you need to start leading, lead a growth group or lead a serving team or jump on a serving team or invite somebody to church or share your story about how Jesus has changed your life with a friend or a neighbor or a family member, or maybe a coworker that's going through some hard time, maybe you could pull them to the side and say, hey, do you mind if I pray with you? And do it right then. Don't just say, I'll pray for you. Do it right then. Just take a moment. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have, it's just simple and just pray. Pray for them. See, just obey. Small actions done in faith over time, they lead to big results and big rewards. Look at this, Hebrews chapter 12, or chapter 11, verse 12. And this is Abraham. And so a whole nation, this is the big results, big reward for Abraham. A whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. See, Abraham, his obedience, despite his doubt, was rewarded. It was rewarded with a miraculous son when he was 100 years old that was born, Isaac. Um, we'll talk more about him in the coming weekends. And it was, it was a, a lasting legacy. That, that obedience, despite his doubts, was a lasting legacy that led to a nation which Jesus was born into. The Son of God came in through this nation of Israel. And it's led to eternal, eternal legacy for the whole church, for you and I, for anyone choosing him. And that's through Jesus. See, faith is always rewarded when it's put, into, put in God. When you put your faith in God, he will reward it. Abraham, he, by the time before he had Isaac, he had accumulated a lot. He had a lot of livestock, a lot of possessions. His, um, and he had no one to inherit it when he died. And for them, that was a big deal back then. You didn't have any children, you didn't have any family. It was gonna have to go to a servant somewhere. It just, just wasn't right. And God rewarded him with a son. And God used that reward for his plan and purposes for his kingdom to eventually bring the savior, the Messiah of the world. Now, here's the important thing to understand. God wants to reward your faith. He does. Uh, maybe you're a student, all right, and you got an exam coming up. God wants to help you to recall, you've put your faith in action, he wants you to help you to recall all that you've learned and read about that subject to help you pass that exam. Or maybe you're a single parent and you're struggling with raising a child or raising multiple children on your own. 
God wants to be there. He wants to help you. He wants to guide you in that process so that your children grow to be men and women of integrity and faith. Maybe you're a newly retired and you're trying, you know, you're over the honeymoon period, you've had a good time and now you're trying to figure out what's life about? You know, what's my purpose? God wants to fulfill a purpose in your life that you cannot even ask or imagine yet. I know this, I believe this, I have the faith to trust in it. And so it's just a matter of obeying and taking that one step of faith. Maybe it's a big dream. Maybe it's a big dream that you hadn't seen come through. God wants to be faithful to that. And what he can do is use that big dream in your life to change your life, to reward your life, but also to change and grow his kingdom for the better. Now, it's important to understand this, that the ultimate reward, the ultimate reward for your faith is it's not instant, it's not earthly, it's salvation through a relationship with Jesus Christ. See, eternity is, uh, Pastor Heath said a couple weeks ago, eternity begins now, but it continues on. It begins the moment you make Jesus the leader of your life. All right, that's when your eternity begins, but it continues on heavenly to life with Christ when we leave this earth. Uh, and that, your reward, uh, your ultimate reward is heavenly. Now, when I was a child, uh, I always dreamed of visiting Redwood National Park there in California. I had read about, I'd seen TV shows about the Redwoods, the great giant Redwoods of California. And they, I've always just marveled at them from a distance and always wanted to see them, but never got the chance. Until two years ago, my family and I, my four kids, my wife, we had the opportunity to RV across the country and visit Redwood National Park. It was a dream come true. Um, and we got to live there, camp there for a week. And there were elk all around us and these redwood groves were just beautiful, beautiful and amazing. I got to hike and walk among these. And the more I learned, the more I was, the longer I was there, the more I learned about these trees. And what's interesting, check this picture out. Redwood trees, this is the a pine cone. You would think it would be ginormous, but it's this tiny little pine cone. You can see in the middle of that, that leaf, uh, in the middle of my hand, is a tiny little redwood pine cone. And within that pine cone are half a dozen or more little seeds, seeds that would fit on the tip of your pinky finger, uh, tiny little seeds. And from that tiny little seed, planted, nurtured, cared for, grown over time, becomes the tallest trees in the world. In fact, the tallest tree in the world is a redwood tree and it's recorded at over 380 feet tall. That is tower, technically towering over the Statue of Liberty by over 75 feet. It's unbelievable, unbelievable, these trees. All right, and they grow, but they grow. But the interesting thing is their roots aren't very deep. They're only 12 foot deep. That's two of me deep, but they spread out. But see, a, a redwood tree cannot stand the storms and the winds and the rains of the coastal uh, California on its own. Can't stand on its own. It needs a grove. It needs a grove around it. And what happens is those roots grow into the other roots of the surrounding redwoods. And together, that grove can withstand all the storms, all the winds, all the rains of life for thousands of years. In fact, the oldest recorded tree, when, they, when it falls and you, and you cut it and you count the rings, is over 3,200 years old. Can you believe that? That tree was a good sized tree when Jesus was walking the earth. I mean, I'm in awe of these trees and I think it's because of this. Check out this picture of one of the tallest trees on the trail, my family uh, there at Redwood. It just marveled at the beauty and the height. But I think I'm in awe because of this, because I think it's a beautiful picture of our faith and our faith journey. You know, we, a little tiny seed over time, nurtured in a grove can become so much, can give huge results. And not just for that one tree, but for the whole grove, they all care and protect and feed each other 
It's powerful. It's a powerful lesson for our faith. So I wanna ask you, where are you on your faith journey? Maybe you're a single redwood tree out there needing a grove. Uh, I wanna encourage you to come on in, plug in. Uh, if you, you don't wanna show up on the weekend yet, uh, at the church, hey, plug into a growth group. Uh, f- find a way, start reading the Bible. F- take your next step of faith, whatever God's calling you to do, he's putting on your heart now, take that next step. Maybe you're a seed waiting to be planted. Uh, maybe your next step is just putting your faith into Jesus. Maybe you've got a lot of doubts uh, and you don't know all the answers. Trust me, we're all there. We don't know all the answers. But your next step of faith is putting, putting it in Jesus Christ, making him the leader of your life and deciding to follow him. I wanna encourage you, whatever, wherever you are on that journey, take your next step, put your faith into action and expect God to bless the results, to reward that faith here on earth and in heaven. Uh, I wanna encourage you, if you would, just bow your head uh, where you're sitting and let's go to God in prayer. Will you join me? Father God, I wanna thank you first and foremost for this church. I wanna thank you for Pinnacle. I wanna thank you for the leadership team and not just the staff, but all the leaders, my growth group leader and, and the serving team leaders and, and, and all those that serve and give in such powerful ways. I wanna thank you for each one of them. I wanna thank you for their faith and how you grow it in this beautiful grove called Pinnacle. And so for some out there with us today, God, I know that they're just, they need more faith. In fact, I'm one of those. We can all use more faith. Whether you're going through a struggle, uh, whether you're having a hard time or you're just suffering through some doubts or or fears, uh, you need, you wanna grow your faith. Uh, God, I wanna pray specifically for you right now. Father God, I pray for those that are just, just wanting to come today and grow their faith. I want you to, Lord, I just pray, God, you do a work in them, in them and through them, Lord, that you would lead, the, that you'd light the path and, and lead their steps, Lord, to that very next step. And I know you're not gonna give us the whole plan and that's okay. Help us to be okay with that and just step forward, move forward in faith with you today. I pray that, I pray that you bless their faith, their family, and their friends through that step of faith. And now, for the person here today uh, that's joined us that has, is that seed waiting to be planted. Uh, You had enough faith to just show up, to click the link, to join our online uh, message and, and worship service. If that's you and you feel like God is telling you your next step is to choose him, to follow him, then I wanna encourage you and help you in that prayer. I wanna pray that prayer with you. It's not a magic prayer. It's not the words that save you. It's the change in your heart and and the confessing uh, of your faith for him. And so if you would just pray this with me, Jesus, today, today, this very day, I wanna put my faith in you. I wanna put my seed of faith in you and I want you to lead my life. I understand that you died on a cross and uh, to forgive so that my sins could be forgiven. My mess ups, all my mistakes could be washed away. You paid the price that I couldn't pay and you rose again and you're now seated with the Father in heaven. And so I believe that, I trust in that. I don't understand it all necessarily but I wanna put my faith in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, today. And if you'll do that, the Holy Spirit will come inside of you and bless your life and grow your faith and bring huge results and huge rewards in your life. Now, thank you for joining us at Pinnacle Online. Have a blessed weekend, and I look forward to seeing you next time.